Let's turn to uh, Jim Early, who joins me for more insight on this story. He's a former director of cultural studies and communication at Smithsonian Institute. Uh, Jim, uh, the Cuban government seems to think this is all America's fault or the instigators who are causing uh, all this uh, trouble. Uh, what are your thoughts on this? I mean, clearly, U.S. sanctions and the decades-long U.S. embargo is playing a role here. But why are we seeing these protests so overtly, so much frustration now? Well, I think we're seeing a, a realistic manifestation of the crisis, the economic crisis, uh, unprecedented since the fall of the Soviet Union uh, that uh, Cuba uh, is experiencing uh, based on three factors. Uh, that is the worldwide uh, crisis of uh, production and distribution uh, produced by the pandemic, uh, the continuation of uh, the Trump-Biden-Harris administration uh, economic uh, warfare policy against all of the Cuban people, which is designed uh, to have them rebel against uh, their government. And three, uh, the self-avowed critical reflections of the Cuban government, certainly dating over the last uh, 13, 14, 15 years, including the last uh, president, Raul Castro, uh, who has talked about their own errors and their own failures uh, at the economic level, uh, independent of the economic war blockade by the United States. Uh, but let's be accurate about what President Diaz uh, Canals Bermudez has said. He has said that citizens do have a right and an obligation to express uh, criticism about the lack of the material development. Uh, what he is standing against and what Americans need to understand is that segment of the citizenry, which is not represented by all of those in the street, that are really in collusion with the U.S. State Department, which is denying the agreed-upon uh, 20,000 uh, annual uh, migration visas, uh, a policy that we have established with many countries around the world. But more importantly, uh, the economic war blockade that prevents third parties from providing uh, normal trade relations that all governments or most governments in the world experience, even when they have ideological and political all differences. Right, so, so let me ask so you this. So what is being criticized is the anti-socialist, uh, pro-capitalist uh, dimension of this, but it is not being denied that they have legitimate reasons uh, to be concerned about their economic warfare. It sounds like U.S. sanctions and the economic embargo are not going to go away anytime soon, at least that is our sense. So what is the responsibility of the Cuban government right now when COVID cases are on the, on the surge, when people have to stand in line for food and medicine, when they want more freedom? I, I understand, obviously, there are issues here. And I just want you to tell me, does the Cuban government here have a responsibility to directly address these issues? And how does it do it with the limitations that it has? The Cuban government, uh, as an elected government, because it is an elected government, has every responsibility and, oblig and obligation to meet uh, the basic needs and um, aspirations uh, of its citizenry. Uh, particularly when it asserts the notion of a participatory democracy that citizens are at the center of democracy, uh, not government, but citizens. And so it must respond to that. However, let's be clear that when there is an economic warfare going on unilaterally by the United States of America that is threatening other nations, the great majority of the nations annually in the U.N. voting uh, to do away with the U.S. blockade so that Cuba will fit into the normal protocols of how nations handle their agreements and mutual interest, as well as their ideological and political differences, uh, that is unacceptable. And the Cuban government will be in great straits to meet its responsibility as long as the great power of the United States continues this economic warfare. Right. But yes, Absolutely. the Cuban government is ultimately responsible uh, to the citizens who have elected it.